Welcome to the Acrylic Portrait Painting Masterclass, lesson number three. Beginning your painting lightly and confidently. I'm so excited you're here again. And hey, we're finally starting the painting. Um, it's awesome to see so many artists enjoying uh, the challenge and doing their sketches and just doing a fantastic job. And I'm proud of what you've accomplished as well. If you've been following along here with the lessons and you've done the work, you've created a sketch, high fives to you. Like I said, it's not an easy undertaking, but you did it. And I'm so proud of you for doing that. Um, but today we're gonna be doing the actual painting process. So I wanna dive right into the lesson here and start with a quick prayer and then we'll get started. Uh, Father, I ask a blessing here on this class. Bless all the students, Lord, enable them to learn these skills here of painting an acrylic portrait they can be proud of. And in this particular lesson here, how to seal in the sketch and get it ready for painting and beginning that painting confidently, Lord, help me to teach it well, help the students to learn, help them to enjoy the process, Lord. Um, anoint all of their brush strokes and give them confidence and clarity as they paint. Bless them, protect them, keep them safe. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're gonna begin here. And the first step, the first step is to white out the grid lines. We wanna white out the grid. Um, because in the sketch stage, we obviously needed a grid to be able to create the sketch. But now at this part of the, the stage of the portrait, it's served its purpose. And so it's time for that grid to uh, disappear. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is take some titanium white. Now get your small condiment container or a small cup of some sort. And we're gonna take pure undiluted titanium white. You don't have to put a whole lot in, just a couple dollops. And I would say something about like this would be good. Um, and then you wanna take a one inch or three quarter flat and then also a half inch or three eighths flat. All right, we're gonna start with the larger brush and I'm gonna work my way from left to right. And basically what we wanna do is obliterate these grid lines so that we don't see them as we actually start the painting. You know, since we're doing this in the glazing technique and the layers are translucent, there's the potential of the grid lines showing through if we don't obliterate them right now. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna dip my brush in and I'm gonna start covering over. And since we're using the paint undiluted, completely opaque, no medium added, no water added to it, you'll find that it does cover pretty rapidly. Now, again, we do this step before sealing in the sketch, okay? This is diving in right after the sketch process and we're gonna just go ahead and do this prior to sealing in the sketch. So what I wanna do is just get as close to these edges as I can. I don't wanna go over my lines at all. And I really wanna smooth out those brush strokes as much as possible. Uh, this, this is something that shouldn't take too long. It should take you maybe, oh, five, five, 10 minutes, maybe 15 at the most, depending on how fast you are at it. So we just wanna quickly go over the grid lines, anywhere where we don't have the sketch showing. I really don't have to obliterate the grid lines in his hat because um, I'll be eventually getting that value, that color of the hat to black. So these grid lines are, are gonna be obscured by the dark tonal value of the hat. So I really don't have to go over it. Um, just the areas that would be more of a middle range value to light, those are the, the, the lines that you're gonna wanna cover up. And that would be like the background, his shirt obviously, because that is very light in value. And then also um, his face because we have a lot of lighter values in the illuminated portion of his face. All right, now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna put my, my brush into the rinsing container. And, 
And I'm going to grab the smaller brush, the half inch or three eighths, half inch or three eighths flat. And now I'm going to fill in the smaller areas, like on his cheek. and his nose and any of those highlighted illuminated portions of the face. And you'll find you're, you're also going to be adding just a little more of a brightness here, a lighter value that you can work out of when you get into your, your sketch, or I'm sorry, when you get into your actual painting. Uh, so we want to go right up to the edges as close as we can to the lines we drew without going over them. But I would rather, for this particular portion of the painting, I'd rather you not go over the edge and kind of stay away from the edge than go over the, the lines that you drew. Um, but there is a portion of the painting process where I'm gonna give you the opposite advice. But in this particular stage in preparing your sketch for painting, I would say try to avoid going over the lines. So if you, you can't, if you feel like you can't get too close to them, then kind of stay away from the, the edges and uh, just f fill over the uh, grid lines as best as you can. All right, so here's a little line I want to cover over right by his Adam's apple. And here, and so here I'm just being very selective where I'm touching over those lines. Um, I don't want to I don't want to have any grid lines showing if I can help it. But wherever those grid lines cross over into areas that are shaded, I'm going to leave them alone because you really can hardly see them anyway. And when we get enough painted layers on, they're going to be obscured. So I'm going to step back and just see if I covered over everything. Uh, looks like I missed a little spot here on his shirt, on the, the collar, on the lapel, so we'll just fill that in. Notice how I'm using very short choppy strokes to get this small area in so I don't bleed over the sketch lines. And that gives me a great deal of control as I'm painting while it's right, still wet. All right, so um, this would be the end of step number one. What we want to do at this point is just let this dry. And I would say maybe 15 minutes to 30 minutes would be good. Double check it, touch the paint, make sure it's not wet or tacky. Um, if it feels cool to the touch, it's still wet underneath, even if it feels dry on the surface. But 15 to 30 minutes in a dry environment should be enough time. Uh, to get you to the next step. I'll see you there. All right, and now for step number two, you want to seal in your sketch. Uh, the titanium white paint that we use to obliterate the grid line should be dry by now and feels dry to the touch. So the next step is to seal in the sketch. And why do we want to seal in the sketch? Well, the main reason to seal in the sketch is to give us a barrier so that when we start the actual painting process, we're not going to obscure or start to mix the, the colored pencil pigment with the paint pigment and have a mess on our hands. So we just want to create a barrier and the best way to do that is to seal it in with matte medium. We're going to take oh, just enough basically to cover the bottom of this container. You can use uh, either one, but make sure it's a one inch or three quarter inch flat. And we're going to dip that into our container. Just get enough to get the bristles loaded up with matte medium. And then we're going to start to seal it in, starting with the left-hand corner and working our way across. And you always want to keep that wet edge. So we're just going up and down and you can see it's going to start to lift up some of the pigment. So it's actually good to put a little more matte medium on your brush. And you'll find when you have more medium on your brush, it will create a barrier to keep some of that pigment from lifting up. And 
and it's okay to have some of it lift up a little bit but the more you have on your brush the better uh, what will happen is, is if you don't have enough pigment on your bristles then your bristles will start to disturb I'm sorry if you don't have enough medium if you don't have enough matte medium on your bristles then the pigment will start to be disturbed by the bristle action so you really want to make sure you have plenty on there and that'll keep that from happening hey really quick I want you to watch a second method that I have for sealing in your sketch before you do anything before you implement this particular method I'm showing you with the canvas upright I have another method that I think is going to be a little bit easier for you and I, I don't want you to encounter frustration this early on in your painting so uh, watch the entire um, method here watch this whole step before you actually start to implement it and then that way you'll see the second method and uh, like I say for for most people I think that's going to work the best so um, all right I'm going to show you the rest of this step now now it will inevitably pick up some of your sketch it's going to pick up some of the colored pencil pigment that's inevitable so what I want you to do is do some crisscross strokes like I'm doing here and you're just going to be distributing that evenly across the surface of your your uh, canvas and again diagonal strokes back and forth it's going to be an arm workout for you and you will pick up like I said some of the pigment but you'll see most of it still remains it shouldn't obliterate all of it now you can come back and smooth it out with some lighter strokes and if it starts to dry then you want to leave it be you don't want to overwork it I want to just inspect the canvas make sure I don't have any crazy drips or anything um, yeah but that that's that's how you do uh, step number two uh, sealing in your sketch so what you want all right so what I have here is a just a practice canvas an 11 by 14 canvas panel and I want to show you a different method of sealing in your sketch um, I chose the the one that I showed you by dipping your brush into matte medium because I have my canvas vertical and it would have been impossible to do this other method but I'm going to show you how you can do it here so what you'd want to do is take your canvas and put it flat on a table and I'm going to show you the difference here when we uh, dip this brush into the matte medium and start sealing this in you can see how it's starting to pick up some of the pigment uh, from the colored pencil and it's starting to obliterate it and you're not losing it completely but you can see it does kind of make a brown glaze and I don't want that to scare you as you see so that could happen I mean like I said if you brush uh, with large copious amounts on your bristles that should minimize it but if you want to uh, play it safe you can do this instead so imagine this side here is your canvas and what you can do is just squirt some matte medium over it and just start brushing it it's going to waste a little bit of matte medium but what it will do is it'll seal in your sketch as you can see without really disturbing any of the pigment and the reason for that the reason for that is because you have just a huge barrier between your bristles and the pigment because you squirted so much on there such a copious amount but I would say I'm just gonna set this here if this was it you just kind of squirt on like something like that and then you would just start brushing that and you'd really want to make sure you don't have any lines left over get all the um, Kind of blobs and streaks smoothed out anyway I hope this uh, hope this tip helps try it out and uh, let me know what works best for you all right and we'll go back to step number three all right and now it's time for step number three where we're gonna be muting your sketch muting your sketch or another word for it is the toning layer um, or providing a ground to work our painting out of 
Um, so for this particular stage, what you want to do is you want to take the two containers you had from before, one with your titanium white and then the other with your matte medium. And what you want to do is mix a little bit of raw sienna and burnt sienna into the uh, container with the titanium white. So you just want to take a tiny, tiny bit. Um, you can use a palette knife or the heel end of a brush, an old brush will work. Um, but you just want to squirt a little bit onto your palette knife or onto the back end of the brush. And then you just want to put a little bit into the container like this. And that's all you need. And wipe that off. And then we're going to take a little bit of burnt sienna. So just equal amounts. All right, and just dab a little bit of that in into that container. We might have to add a little more titanium white. I'm not sure, but we'll find out. And then what we want to do is stir this around. And we might need to add a little more titanium white because I used up most of that in the first step when I was obliterating the grid lines. So we're going to just mix this together. And I'm choosing these two colors because it matches the skin tone of the subject of the guy we're painting here um, pretty well. Now, when you have this all mixed thoroughly together, you want to make sure you have it mixed thoroughly. Then what I'd like you to do is take your matte medium and you can dump that in. If you have any excess from this other container, dump that in. And you can use a brush to get some of the excess out. Just take a brush. And here we go. We'll just go like this and kind of scoop that out. Just like if you were baking a cake and you were taking your batter and getting it out of the bowl with a spatula. Same kind of concept. You just want to get as much of that out as you can. And uh, then squirt some more in. So I would squirt quite a bit. So you have this container pretty well full. And you're going to stir that around. All right. Stir it really, really, really good. Try to get everything off of the side so you don't end up running into that later, but stir it really, really good. Now, um, I'm going to have this rag ready just in case I don't like what I see. And uh, you can Get that rag dipped in water a little bit if your water's clean enough, or you can have a uh, spray bottle nearby, and you can use that to wipe it off if you don't like it. Now make sure that your canvas is completely dry from the previous step, uh, which would be um, sealing in the sketch. You want to make sure everything's dry, that matte medium is completely dry to the touch, and it's not cool or anything like that. And we're going to apply this on top and see how that looks. So it should just kind of mute the sketch down a little bit. And also give a little bit of a, a tone to this as well. So again, starting in that upper left corner with linear strokes going up and down vertically with the canvas with the orientation of the canvas and always keeping that wet edge we just work our way from left to right now we don't want to obliterate our sketch too much but it is going to dry a little bit um, less foggy than how it appears while it's wet so you will notice that it's going to um, 
dry a little more clear. We can get this smoothed out really well. And we're gonna end up losing some of the uh, clarity of the sketch, but that's important to mute it down a little bit because it's gonna make it easier then um, to not have to apply so many layers of paint to obliterate the, uh, or I should say not obliterate, but to um, soften the harsh edge of the pencil strokes. We want to slowly transition this from a sketch into a painting, and this is a great way to do that. So we're just going to smooth this out. and use very, a very, very light touch at the end. You can see I'm just barely grazing the canvas. So initially, you have to use a lot of pressure, um, but you just wanna barely graze that canvas, and you'll find that's gonna really give you a good effect. So that's where we end up with this stage. Now we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna let this dry, and I would say probably Oh, about 30 minutes or more, maybe even all the way up to an hour. And while that's happening, then you can go on to the next step, which is preparing your palette. And you can prepare your palette while this dries. I'll see you there. All right, and now we are up to step number four, preparing your palette. Now, if you did the last step correctly, muting your sketch or creating the toning layer, um, you should have a sketch that looks something like this. Um, you'll still be able to see a lot of the detail and it shouldn't, it shouldn't look too scary. It shouldn't look like there's streaks or uh, like you have a big cloud in front of your portrait. Um, it will be muted down so the contrast that you had before <clears throat> won't be there, but it's going to make it a lot easier again for you to be able to cover your sketch uh, with paint and transition into the painting stage so that your painting looks like a painting and not just a sketch that's covered with some washes of color. Um, but here is how we select <clears throat> the colors for our palette. You can see I have my palette below here and I have another project going on. So it's a little bit messy right now. Um, so you get to see my messy palette. And uh, I'm just gonna pull this off here and this palette system I have with the aluminum foil, I love it. It's so easy to use. And I just take the uh, messy mixing area that I have and I discard that and I can actually add that to my recycling and uh, be kind to planet Earth and make a little extra money as well. Just put it in with my aluminum cans. So now I have a fresh area that I can add some aluminum foil to. So I just take out a fresh sheet of aluminum foil and I crimp the corners in and fold it over like this and then it fits right on top, right on top of the mixing area. And then that way I don't have to put down new colors every time. I can conserve my color usage, make it last a lot longer, save a little money and uh, you know it's always good for the, for the environment as well. So um, I'll just kind of push this down and get it to lay flat. And because of the paint that was there previously, the aluminum foil will actually stick down and stay in place because the uh, remnants of the paint left on there holds it down. And I'm just gonna basically put fresh paint over the palette on top of the old colors I have here. So. I'm going to start with Romber Dark and put that right there, just a little dollop of that. Next color is going to be Burnt Sienna. So we add a little bit of that. And then Raw Sienna. And then moving on, we're going to go to Thalo Blue, just a little bit of that that's a very, very strong pigment. 
And then ultramarine blue would be the next color. And then alizarin crimson. Put a little extra of that on. Um, yeah, we'll go with some organic red orange. And that would also be called organic pyrrole orange. You could use a cadmium orange in place of that. Indian yellow, you could use a cadmium yellow instead of that. Although Indian yellow is going to probably give you a better result with the glazing technique. But just use what you have on hand. You can refer to the palette layout guide that you have um, in your welcome kit when you're registered for this. And by the way, I encourage you to register. And then when you do that, you'll get all the downloadable um, resources that will help you out, including the palette layout guide. You'll get my um, supplies list. And then you'll also get the gridded reference photo that you can use uh, to paint along with this here. So make sure you, um, you sign up for this. Register at realisticacrylic.com backslash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge and you can get all registered and then you'll be able to paint along with us here in this challenge it's going to be a lot of fun uh, to have you with us so just want to let you know if you're not already registered um, to do that and then you can get these extra benefits as well all right so you have the palette all laid out and uh, then the next step after that is to begin the first layers of painting so i'll see you in that step all right, and now it's time for step number five, the actual painting process. All of this preparation, but now we're going to actually get into the painting. So I'm excited to show you this part. Um, what we're going to do is uh, add some matte medium to the palette. So you want to have that matte medium as fresh as possible. Make sure you have your spray bottle nearby so you can mist your palette and keep your paints nice and wet if need be. And now what we're going to do is start with a flat brush, a three, three quarter or one inch flat brush. And we want to make sure that's nice and prepared, dry, there's no paint left in it. And we're going to start blocking in, doing the underpainting. Um, so with the matte medium here, I want to just make a decision as far as what color to use um, for the initial layers. And I think what I'm going to choose is ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue would be a really good color, color that I can introduce into the hat. I can introduce it into the shadow area next to his face. And I can introduce it um, onto his shirt. And I like to get the most I can out of one individual color, um, get a lot of mileage for it. So I'm going to take just a little bit of ultramarine blue. And what we want to do is just dip the corner of the brush into that, wipe it off on the side next to the matte medium, then bridge the gap and pull the matte medium slowly into that little bit that you wiped off onto the palette can pull a little bit more in, but we want to start really faint, really light, and there's a reason for that. If you start very lightly, it'll allow you then to adjust on the fly. So if you go in full bore and just slap the paint on there really thick, it's going to be difficult then to see your sketch. It's going to be difficult if you make a mistake and you put your paint in the wrong spot. Then you're going to have to come in with opaque paint and try to fix it up. So I'd like to, to save you that frustration, make the process as easy as possible for you. And the way to do that is just begin very lightly. And we want to basically cover over the whole canvas, not leave any area neglected, not have any areas of the canvas that are white and intimidating, where people could say, oh, the painting's not done, you missed that spot. No, we're gonna cover everything. And just like a Polaroid photograph, if you remember those, uh, you would you'd take the photograph and that piece of film would spit out of the front and you'd be holding it in your hand and within the matter of a minute or so, 
that that photograph would just develop in front of your eyes. It was so amazing for that time, you know, and you'd see a picture, but it would slowly fade in, right? You had that white piece of film. Pretty soon you could make out like a tree and a person's face and then slowly, slowly, slowly you would start to build and build. You get more color and contrast and then you'd have a photograph in front of your eyes. Well, that same kind of process or that same way that the picture developed with a Polaroid print, that's what we're gonna do here in this painting. That's how we're gonna do a painting like this using the glazing technique. So at all times, I wanna think of it like that and I, I'd like you to think of it like that. And that'll make this process make a lot more sense to you. So, all right, so we have this glaze. We have this glaze here, I'll just show that to you. Again, matte medium, ultramarine blue. And we're just going to work that into the bristles, get a lot on the bristles. And then I'm going to start by adding some of that to his hat. And why not, let's just add it also to the background too. So you might think, well, Matt, why are you adding that blue? Why are you adding that blue to his hat? His hat is not blue, it's black. Yeah, I know that. But um, in this particular technique, um, this glazing method, we're not gonna use black. We're gonna avoid using ivory black, even though you, you could technically use it, but I'm not gonna teach it to you that way. Um, I'd like you to make your own black, your own grays. They're a lot richer when you make your own and you can adjust the, the color temperature, whether it be cooler or warmer. So um, we're not gonna use black, but um, any, any areas in your painting that have a dark value, and that's the level of light and dark where you look at it and if you were to put it on a scale between black and white and anything in between, and you say that hat, that's very, very dark. Um, anything like that, you can use ultramarine blue for as one of the layers. Now, I'm adding this to the entire hat, and I, I want to keep a wet edge. And I'm going to use some crisscross diagonal strokes to smooth it out. You want to make sure you get that paint all the way up to the edge. Remember when I told you before that you didn't want to go up to the edge when you, when you were adding uh, the white to cover your grid lines in step number one? Well, in this particular step, I want you to think the opposite. Now I do want you to go up to the edge. I want you to make sure that you get that paint all the way up to the edge of the outline of the hat. Okay, so don't be afraid to color over the lines. I know they taught you in grade school, never color over the lines when you're using, you know, when you're doing a coloring book page. But in this instance here, it's better to go over the lines than to not go up to them, okay? You can always come back in and cut in with some opaque paint and fix up any rough edges that you have but it's a lot harder to fill it in and match it where you might have missed that opportunity during the glazes. So just go up to the edge. If you go over a little bit, not a huge deal, not a big, not a big problem. Uh, it's definitely something you can remedy later. Let's go and get this um, area up here too. Let's uh, block that in as well. All right, just strokes back and forth really quick. We can go over the edge a little bit here because um, the background's out of focus, so that'll be okay. We can, we can go over the edge a little bit and no big deal. It actually works to our benefit. And I'm gonna add a little more ultramarine blue. My glaze supply is getting exhausted. So we're gonna take a little more matte medium, kind of bridge the gap, put some off to the side and meet the two together so you can control the amount of pigment to your mixture. Go very light in the beginning. We're talking about 95% medium, 5% pigment. And again, this matte medium, you know, I think I've explained this in previous lessons, but matte medium is like liquid gold for the glazing technique. Um, it, it's milky wet when it's dry, as you can see, but it dries crystal clear. And it allows that light to shine through these, these layers. 
and it's going to give your painting a lot of depth. It's going to allow you to build up shading and smoothness of gradations that you can't achieve any other way. It's going to allow your acrylic painting to look a lot like an oil painting. And so um, this is really amazing stuff and I love using it. I'm blessed to be able to get it in bulk like this from Nova Color. But um, yeah, so let's, let's get back to the painting here before I digress too much. And I'm going to, again, get a good amount of this medium on my brush. And I'm going to add this blue glaze to his hat. Or I'm sorry, not his hat, his shirt. And again, we want to make this layer very light. If you look at it on the canvas, it looks too dark. Add a little more matte medium, thin it out, make it very, very light. Most artists that I teach this technique to, they go way, way too dark. They're very used to painting opaquely. And it's very challenging to get them to think light, start off very, very light. So just want to get that ingrained, you know, in your brain as you're working on this, go very, very light. And it's always easier than to add more layers later on than to go really, really opaque and then try to fix it up. So go very light and you're just going to want to just make a little bit of a difference where you can barely see what you did. But I, I think you can see what I did here. So I'm adding this same glaze, same color to this background area behind his head. Now you might again say, well, that's not blue, Matt. That's like kind of a grayish yellowish greenish color yeah i know but we're going to add more layers and you're going to get the cumulative effect of these layers together so it's okay to start off simple start off very simple and then go complex and i'm going to add a little more medium and just kind of blend this out we're just going to fill in this whole area and let's let's add the same color to this part of his shirt as well. And I'm going to go into the shadow area. So again, I'm looking at the reference photo. All right, I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm just studying the colors. I'm seeing where that blue falls into place and I can see the blue. Let's take that grid off of there. I can see the blue. Um, all in these shadows. I can see the blue and even in these mid-tones as well. So that's why I'm going to add the blue right here. But you're just going to have to really get some, get a good amount of paint on the edge of your brush. And you want to just kind of tap it in, tap, tap that into the uh, shadow area. You can use your finger to wipe it off or a rag. Yeah, and then step back a little bit, see what you did, kind of look at it. And I like to see, did I miss any areas that should get this bluish color right now? Um, I would say no, I don't think I missed anything. If I want to really be precise, I can just finish this off by taking a round brush and making that same glaze using ultramarine blue and matte medium. All right, so you can see how I'm mixing that. And I'm going to, I know it seems kind of strange, but I'm going to apply it to all of the darker values on his face. Now I have to be careful. I only want to apply it to any of the areas that look black, all right? So analyze the face on the reference photo, study it, and you can see, okay, are there any areas that look like they're black? And well, his eyes are very, very dark in value. So I'm gonna add this blue just to those areas. Eyebrows, they're quite dark. Eyes, yeah, I'm just gonna add this blue with this round brush. Be very careful with this step though. You don't want to overdo it. You want to make sure that the glaze is very, very faint. Very faint. 
and you know this step yeah it's not absolutely necessary to do it but it's kind of a nice way to use up the paint on your palette and just get the concept of how you can use ultramarine blue not only for blue colors but also for those dark dark values that are almost black because we're going to come in again with more layers and we're going to add uh, raw umber dark and that's going to complement the ultramarine blue and really really create a rich black so i think you'll love that down and uh, hey i'm so excited that you were able to watch this with me and you're painting along with me um, leave a comment below um, here if you're watching this on youtube or if you're watching it at realistic acrylic portrait school leave a comment below let me know what you think of this lesson uh, let me know how this is starting to click and to make sense for you. Hey, if you have a question on your painting, you need some help, um, encouragement, or a comment, um, any tips, just uh, shoot me an email, leave me a comment, let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this lesson, and uh, I'm delighted that you joined with me today. Look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. All right, God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.